Greetings and welcome to the gallery. I am the curator and host, Robert Cooper. And guess what? We are still under self-imposed quarantines. And because of that, I still haven't been able to go out to galleries. I still haven't been able to interview other photographers. Now, the past quarantine episodes, I spoke about the photography books that I own. And then I talked about interesting movie characters who happen to be photographers. And in this episode, I'm going to focus on photography documentaries. Now, the documentaries that I'm talking about in this episode are easy to find. You can find them on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Canopy, which is another streaming service, YouTube, and Vimeo. I hope you guys enjoy this episode focusing on photography documentaries. And if there's any that I missed and that you find interesting, let me know in the comments below. First up is Through a Lens Darkly. Black Photographers and the Emergence of a People. It is inspired by Reflections in Black, a History of Black Photographers, 1840 to the Present, by Deborah Willis, who also serves as the film's producer. This documentary is about how black people have used photography to document their existence through family albums and through art. The photographers who are featured in this documentary include Clarissa Sai, Lyle Ashton Harris, Carrie Mae Weems, Jonathan Eubanks, Anthony Barboza, Carla Williams, and many others. These photographers have used their images to proclaim their racial identity as well as their sexual identity. Dolce Vida Africana, which is about Malian photographer Malik Sidibe. Now, if you watch episode three of the gallery, you will know that he is one of my favorite photographers. This documentary gives a brief history on the northern African country Mali and how Sidibe came to prominence. It also includes a visit to his studio in Bamako, which is the capital of Mali. It also shows the opening of an art exhibit at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City that featured Sidibe's photography. Carrie Mae Weems speaking of art. Carrie Mae Weems is an African American woman photographer who is known for her photography that touched on subjects like race, sexism, personal identity, and politics. This documentary takes place in 2004 and features Weems having a discussion in front of an audience about her body of work, which is comprised of 17 projects spanning more than two decades at that time, from 1981 to 2004. She discusses her iconic projects, including the Kitchen Table series, which came out in 1990, in that series, Weems uses self-portraits to show women experiencing love, motherhood, compassion, and isolation. Ain't Joking, which is from 1987 to 1988, which was an examination of racial stereotypes, and her 1984 series, Family Pictures and Stories. Jamel Shabazz, Street Photographer. Now, Jamel Shabazz is one of my favorite photographers of all time. Shabazz's photos span several decades, beginning in the early 80s all the way up till today. At first glance, many might think that the photos are just of the everyday black person in New York City during the 80s, 90s, and the thousands. But if you look deeper, it is more than just that. It is hip-hop culture. It is hip-hop fashion and attitudes. It is a documentation of hip-hop from its early days, before commercialization. It is Kazelle's. It is Adidas and Puma sneakers with fat laces. It's black love. It's black pride. It's Brooklyn. It's New York City. It's hip-hop from its early roots all the way up till today. Everybody Street. 
This documentary is about the complicated subject of street photography, and it features some of the most iconic street photographers of the modern era. The photographers featured in this documentary include Joel Meyerwitz, Jill Friedman, Bruce Davidson, Bruce Gelden, Martha Cooper, and Jamel Shabazz. Each photographer talks about the ups and downs of street photography. Some talk about the dangers they've encountered while doing street photography. And they talk about some of their most iconic street photographs. Shot, the psycho-spiritual mantra of rock. Now, I'm a big lover of music photography, be it rock, jazz, reggae, hip-hop. If it's music photography, I love it. This documentary is about iconic rock and roll photographer Mick Rock. And yes, ironically, that is his name. His last name really is Rock. He is known as the man who shot the 70s, and he has taken iconic photographs of Lou Reed, David Bowie, Iggy Pop, The Ramones, and many more. Now, I like this documentary because of its originality. It starts out with Mick Rock possibly dying. There's doctors and nurses working on him. And while they are working on him, he's having flashbacks of his life in photography. L.A. Originals. This is a brand new documentary that just came out on Netflix and it highlights the relationship between photographer Estevan Oreo and tattoo artist Mark Machado, also known as Mr. Cartoon. These two were of Mexican heritage and were highly instrumental in introducing the world to Chicano art, culture, and lifestyle of Los Angeles in the late 1980s and early 1990s. As a photographer, Oreo has taken photographs of numerous hip-hop artists including Cypress Hill, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, 50 Cent, and Kendrick Lamar. But he has also taken pictures of Kim Kardashian, Dennis Hopper, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Adrian Brody, and he went on tour with Blink-182. His photographs have also been in magazines such as Complex, Rolling Stone, Vibe, FHM, GQ, and The Source. He has also photographed the gangs of Los Angeles as well as the homeless epidemic in LA. Harry Benson, Shoot First. Benson is a Scottish photographer who has shot for Life magazine, Vanity Fair, People, and The New Yorker amongst others. He first came to prominence when he documented the Beatles' first trip to the United States in 1964. He has taken pictures of every U.S. president since Dwight D. Eisenhower and has covered various war zones spanning the globe. He was also standing next to Robert F. Kennedy when he was assassinated in 1968 and in the documentary he talks about the difficulty of taking the photos during that moment. He has taken pictures of celebrities including Bobby Fischer, Elizabeth Taylor, Michael Jackson, Muhammad Ali, Jack Nicholson, and a buck naked OJ Simpson. Her aim is true. This is another documentary about a rock photographer. This one features Jenny Delaccio. Whenever they say you're never too old to start something new, believe them. Delaccio began taking photographs of rock groups in the Seattle area at the age of 47. Delaccio was known for taking photographs of rock bands not in the studio but out on location around different areas in Seattle. She took photographs of numerous bands around the Northwest, including Paul Revere and the Raiders, Don and the Good Times, Mr. Lucky and the Gamblers, The Daily Flash, The Bootman, and The Whalers. Not to be confused with Bob Marley's Whalers, but The Whalers from Seattle. She also took concert photos of The Rolling Stones, The Who, 
the Yardbirds, the Shangri-Las, the Loving Spoonfuls, the Beach Boys, the Mamas and the Papas, Gary Lewis and the Playboys, amongst others. A great day in Harlem. This documentary is about the iconic photograph, The Great Day in Harlem by Art Kane in 1958. The photograph was taken in front of a brownstone on 126th Street between 5th and Madison Avenue. It featured many of the great jazz artists of that era. In that photo you had jazz legends such as Art Blakely, Count Basie, Benny Golson, Mary Lou Williams, Sonny Rollins, Horace Silver, Art Farmer, Lester Young, and Thelonious Monk, amongst many others. I give thanks to each and every last one of you who watched this episode. And please, if you have any suggestions as to what topics I should discuss in the future, please let me know because I am running out of lists to talk about. I'm also trying to figure out how to conduct interviews via Zoom or any other virtual platform such as Instagram Live or whatever else I can find out there so that you guys don't have to watch me talk about these doggone lists again. I want to bring this show back to its original essence and what the idea behind it was supposed to be about, which is the art of photography and also interviewing photographers whose work I think is superb and I hope that you will too. So please stay tuned for that and bless the love.